Here I have a white light coming out of a narrow slit, and that's a triangular glass prism in front of the light. I can put a mirror over here to help you see that slit with white light coming out. You probably already know that white light consists of light of all rainbow colors. As you can see on the wall, the prism separates the different Roy G. Biv colors in the white light. Now let's find out how a prism does it. Although all EM waves, including all color light, have the same speed in vacuum, different color light can have slightly different speeds in a material. For example, in crown glass, the index of refraction versus the wavelength graph looks like this. This graph shows that violet light has a slightly bigger index of refraction than red light. That means uh, the violet light has a slower speed in crown glass than red light. This behavior of light in material medium is called dispersion. Now let's shine a beam of white light on a glass prism as shown in the demonstration. Without considering dispersion, see if you can draw the ray continuation as the light ray propagates through the prism and then out into air. It can be helpful for you to draw normal lines at each interface. This is my normal line for the air glass interface right here. When light goes from air into glass, it slows down, so the angle should get smaller. That means that the light ray should bend that way. Then I need another normal line right here. When light goes from glass to air, it speeds up, so the angle should get bigger. That means this light ray should bend uh, that way. Now let's consider dispersion. When light goes from air into glass, it slows down, but the red light does not slow down as much as violet light. Therefore, red light does not bend as much as violet light in this refraction. So if I make the ray I drew earlier the red light, violet would bend more right over here. Like this. Here I drew another normal line. When the violet ray comes out of the prism into air, it speeds up. Since violet ray has to speed up more than red, so they can have the same speed again in air. Violet ray encounters more speed change, therefore again violet light bends more. This is how the different colors get separated. This also explains why on the wall, red is on the right side and violet on the left side. Rainbows work similarly. We see rainbows usually when the sun is kind of low in the sky and there is mist in the air. So instead of glass prism, we have water droplets in the air to bend the light. Water droplets are spherical in shape because of water's surface tension. So here we have an enlarged water droplet. White light from the sun enters the water sphere in this direction. Then when the light reaches the other side of the sphere, part of the light will refract into air, while the other part of the light reflect and then come out this side. This reflected part is the part that gives us the rainbow. Now see if you can draw the ray continuation for the ray that gets into the water sphere and then reflected by this interface. If you can, consider dispersion. In water, just like in crown glass, red light is faster than violet light. First, I drew a normal line that is perpendicular to the spherical surface, which means uh, this normal line is the radius. When light goes from air into water, it slows down, so the angle gets smaller. I'm drawing the red light first. When it gets to this surface, uh, it's going to get reflected, so it has to follow the law of reflection, so the angle of incidence equals to the angle of reflection. Here's my normal line. When the light ray goes from water to air, the angle should get bigger because it speeds up. Now let's work on the violet light. Violet light encounters more speed change, whether it's from air into water or water into air. More speed change means more bending. So, so violet light bends more and then it has to follow the law of reflection when it reflects. So these two angles should be equal and then when it comes out, 
the angle should increase because it's going to speed up and it is going to bend more than the red light. So red light comes out at a steeper angle compared to the horizontal than the violet light. For an observer on the ground, red ray being steeper means red is seen higher up. So when you see rainbows in the sky, you would see red on top and violet below. And occasionally, you may see a faint secondary rainbow above the primary rainbow in the sky. Secondary rainbow is formed by white light entering a droplet like this, reflected twice before exiting the droplet. These rays would exit at a higher angle than the primary rainbows. That's why the faint secondary rainbow would appear above the primary one. Also, the violet is at a steeper angle, so the violet is higher. By the way, these are just for ray drawing practice. You do not have to remember things like which color or which rainbow appears higher in the sky.